Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. I'm so excited to have you all here. We're just going to give it a couple of seconds while everyone joins because it does take a few minutes. But thank you for joining us. We are excited to chat with you today. Okay, numbers still going up. That's good. All right, so we, why don't we get started? My name is Amy Keenan. I am your host today and founder of the ISV Society. So excited to have you all here joining us for this amazing conversation and webinar discussing the two sides of the same coin. We have Louise from Use and Rick and Sean from High Radius joining us today. Thank you all for being here. Before we get started, I just want to do a quick housekeep, some quick housekeeping items and um, go over the agenda for you. If my slides would go. Okay. So we are recording this just so you know. And if you we can email it to you afterwards so that you have it and you can share with other members of your team. There is a Q&A section of, in your panel and that's where you can put your questions in there and we will answer, we take some time at the end to be able to answer those for you. We also have a chat section as well where you can chat with us or ask any questions there too. And then we will be launching a couple of polls throughout the webinar. So please make sure you participate in those as well. So with that, I am going to hand it over to the team at High Radius and Use as they take it from here and dive into the two sides of the same coin. We're gonna talk about accounts payable and accounts receivable today. So welcome all. How are Perfect. you? Doing good. How about yourself, Amy? Rick? Sean? Doing great. All right. So I am going to advance these slides so you guys can chat. Perfect. So I, I guess I'll go first. Yes. And then, uh, we'll, we'll get to hear Rick. But um, everyone, thank you for, for, for joining. My name is Luis. I'm an account executive here at Use. Uh, but enough about me. We're going to go ahead and start with Use. You may be wondering who we are. Well, Use was born in the cloud in 2010. Uh, we provide a powerful SaaS-based AP automation solution that is practical and affordable for businesses of all sizes. We do have a sister company, ITSoft. ITSoft is an on-premise-based software company that has over 35 years of experience when it comes to the document processing space for enterprise clients. And what we've done is we've leveraged their expertise, their insight, and we've developed an award-winning application that is cloud-based solution for businesses of all levels. As of now, we do have over 120 employees um, in both offices in the US and Europe. That is growing each month as we speak. We service over 4,000 happy clients that are currently using their documents every day, 200,000 users globally, processing millions of millions of documents per year for over 30 plus countries. It's important to note that we do have a seamless integration with over 250 financial systems or ERPs uh, globally and are adding more every week. Last thing on this slide that I do want to mention is we are passionate when it comes to innovation and we reinvest 25% of our revenue back into our R&D and we sincerely feel that our clients deserve the best technology offers. Next slide. As I mentioned, we are an award-winning application. On the left side, you'll see some of the awards that are uh, some of our latest awards. While on the right side, you have a sample of some of our customers from our portfolio. You'll see businesses of every vertical, retail, hospitality, municipalities, financial institutions, you name it, we have them. You may, on one side of the spectrum, you may have a restaurant that processes a few invoices per month with a simple workflow, limited users. While on the other side, you're going to see three of the big accounting firms. Uh, obviously, they have complex workflows, many users, and process thousands of documents per month. What's important to note here is that every organization can benefit from a modern day solution and everyday business problems, and we can help with that. But now I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to Rick. Thanks, Luis. Um, my name is Rick Bertowski. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I um, 
just a little about my background. I started my career as an accountant and probably did it for 25 years. Uh, and that's why I'm passionate about this space, just because I want to remove the, the drudgery of accounting and, and really automate it and do more with less. Um, so a little bit about high radius. As you look at the slide, um, I, I just want to highlight that high radius is the only provider of an integrated receivables platform for the entire credit to cash cycle. And we'll actually see that on the next slide. Um, we're the number one receivables player in the Fortune 1000 market, and we're fast growing in the mid market as, you know, the, as this takes hold, as this whole application space takes hold, and, and the mid market is looking to become more efficient as well. Um, if you look at the bottom bullet, we um, Gartner just came out with their magic quadrant, and we were the leader in the integrated invoice to cash applications. We're in the upper right position. Um, we're also in IDC's MarketScape for our accounts receivable automation in the upper right position as well. And then um, as the slide shows, we have offices all around the world. Our headquarters are in Houston. We have regional offices in London, Frankfurt, Amsterdam, and Hyderabad, um, but we're all around the world. And how the company got started is really solving the problem for large companies um, with an on-premise solution. And then as the market matured for software as a service and cloud, they moved to the cloud um, and it's, a, it's powered by artificial intelligence and it's backed by some of the top financial institutions in the world like Bank of America, Citibank and PNC. And, and how that happened wasn't by mistake, but, but the banks about the same time as, as High Radius saw a significant need for accounts receivable automation. And they brought in their extensive client base and, and we explored it and expanded. It. And so that's how we got to that position. Next slide, please. And so, you know, the topic of today is two sides of the same coin. And, um, you know, interestingly, I grew up with this when we were just happy to get checks out and receive checks and it was all manual, right? And, and when we talk about high radius in the entire order to cash space, we're talking about all of these boxes, all of these slices, if you will. And if you look at it from, from left to right on the procure to pay, we have procurement. And once you buy, then the, you know, the, on the, uh, the, we have to send out invoices. And so it really is two sides of the same coin. It really is two of the big processes that accounting is responsible for. And quite honestly, the main asset that keeps a company in business, and that is balancing cash. And so that's why we're here today. And, and Luis, anything to add? Yeah, great points, Rick. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, this these are high priorities when it comes to the accounting world. One thing that I do want to mention is there's going to be a lot of similarities, uh, as Rick mentioned. First one I, I do want to mention is, is time. Time is going to be everything. Rick mentioned that everything used to be manual. Um, we do see a lot of uh, businesses out there that still have a manual process. When it comes to automation, we can help with that. And that's something that we're going to go ahead and talk through this whole presentation. Thanks, Luis. Next slide, please. And so this is a, a survey that was done by um, uh, B2B Payment Innovation Readiness Playbook. And so that's on the bottom that was done in 2021 that says the CFO priorities are cost optimization, data-driven decision-making, reducing risk, finance team restructuring, and optimizing liquidity management. And our solution plays in three of these four. We're definitely in cost optimization, reducing heads, data-driven decision-making, having more information about the customer and credit and payments, reducing risk, the risk of cash, right? The risk of delinquent accounts and optimizing liquidity management. So that's where high radius really helps out. And, and Louise, do you want to comment? Sure. Uh, yes. Uh, some other components that I do want to talk about data points, um, and my information was collected from the Ardent Partners, Ardent Partners study, uh, just quickly mentioning on the accounts payable side, uh, top priorities that we've seen um, and are going to be seen for 2022 is obviously implemented that AP automation, improving the reporting, that's going to be critical. We want to make sure that we have visibility for all our users. 
uh, data analytics, which goes in hand in hand with the reporting, and obviously eliminating that paper invoicing. Uh, we want to reduce that manual work that um, our users are doing. Um, and in doing so, uh, this will help us retain top talent. So those are some things to look for 2022. Great, thank you. Next slide, please. And so this is just kind of the, the, the evolution of things when you think about it. I mentioned that High Radius started in the Fortune 1000 companies. And you know they we started there because they could they could they had the biggest need because they had the biggest scalability issues, and and that's because as a business grows the scale of operations grow the number of transactions grow, and the headcount can't be linear with that growth. You have to do something to become more efficient, and that's why we're talking today about accounts receivable, uh, accounts payable. Again, the high transaction volumes in accounting, how do you support that growth? We support it with software. And so that's what we're talking about today. And as I think with that, Luis, I'll turn it over to you to talk about your product. Thank you, Rick. So uh, just elaborating a little bit more on those trends that we, that we spoke about, uh, four key AP trends to look for into 2022. Once again, I'm going to be quoting Arden Partners, great study that's out there. Uh, First one that I want to mention is uh, prioritizing the value of end-to-end -end AP automation. According to Arden Partners, 70% of, of, uh, uh, of MMEs uh, have prioritized AP automation for 2022. That is a change compared to last year as only 48% of those uh, uh, explained that um, in 2021. So that is something to look at. Um, obviously, we want to make sure that we take advantage of that. Second key point that I want to mention is improving B2B payment strategy with digital payments. Payments is going to be a huge player for, for, for our market. And what we found out is that uh, B2B payment strategies are either 30, 37% paying early or 30% paying late. Uh, but over a, a one quarter of our mid um, market and enterprises don't have a payment strategy at all. Uh, obviously, we don't want to be part of those ones that are not taking advantage of that. Uh, with digital payment automation, you can actually turn into a uh, turn a traditional cost and uh, cost center into a profit center by earning cash back and early payment discounts. So, if you want to take advantage of those early payment discounts that you perhaps you're not taking advantage of now, digitalizing that payment option is a great way to do so. Third key point here is reducing the time spent handling invoices and vendor relations. Uh, there's going to be some important uh, uh, components that are part of the Arden Partners. Uh, average time to process an invoice is around 12, 13 days. Uh, that's unchanged from 2021. Uh, we obviously want to help with that. We want to reduce that for you, make it easier for you. Um, other things to notice, and I'll cover those a little bit later, on average, 29% of the time is spent by your users handling supplier inquiries, fixing an invoice, processing payment errors, things like that, any discrepancies. And then invoices of process straight through touchless, which is something that you'll see during our demo, is only at 30% uh, percent this year, which leaves a lot of room and improvement. So if you want to take advantage of that, this is a great way to do it. And the last key point that I want to do it, uh, talk about is preventing and eliminating fraud risk with ironclad security. As you know, COVID happened. Uh, that made a lot of changes within organizations. Post-COVID and remote heavy world has intensified the need for a greater security. As your users are working from home, there is a huge need for a solution out there that is secure to ensure that all the information that is pushed over from ERP into our system is secure. Next slide, please. Moving on into that Arden Partner study, talking a little bit more about the pain points of a manual AP. Uh, I'm sure you're you're going through a lot of these right now. Uh, typical pain points are are well known. Uh, you're like I said, you'll probably experience those every day. But when it comes to the financial impact of that uh, on the organization, sometimes that's unknown or underestimated. Some key points that I want to highlight here is the cost to process a single invoice manual is around fifteen dollars. With automation, you're going to get closer to that three dollars of that 80 80 percent savings. Other, other items that I want to cover here, days from invoice received to pay, around 28 days on average. With automation, we'll try to get you closer to six days. And then there's going to be some other information there at the bottom. 41% uh, of the time, staff is handling supplier calls, 31% late frequency payments, and then obviously duplicate payments, which we want to help you eliminate.
how do we automate the process for you? How do we help with all this? All those slides that we covered before, how do we help you get closer to that savings? This is how we automate that process for you. Our solution is a la carte. So we do offer different modules and we will emulate your process and help you automate that. So this might differ for you, but ultimately the, ex the experience will begin with the integration to your ERP. So whatever financial system you have, we'll make sure that we integrate that. That way, all the information that needs to be pushed over will be on real time. After that, it may begin with the purchase order. You can create purchase orders through our system. You can set controls within those or you can create, continue creating purchase orders through your third-party solution or your ERP, and we can push over that information into our server. That way you can handle the two-way and three-way matching. After that, you'll take advantage of our multi-capture engine, which uses smart data extraction, artificial intelligence. So however you're receiving your invoices, they could be via email. Um, you can drag and drop them from your computer. You can drop them through an SFTP server. Uh, we can help with that. Now you may be wondering what kind of files do we accept? It's important to note that we handle more than PDF. A lot of the competitors out there only handle PDFs with us. I tell everyone, essentially anything that's computer generated, whether it's a PDF or document um, images, we can handle those. After that, you'll take advantage of our workflow, which is really powerful and robust, but at the same time, easy to use. We'll emulate your process. You can define how you want those invoices reviewed how you want those approved. You can determine how many levels of approval. We offer unlimited users, unlimited routes. You can have up to nine people approve one invoice, which is a lot. And then once you have that routed, then you can go ahead and take advantage of our use pay functionality, which within our system, not only are you gonna process purchase orders and do all that, you can also finalize with payment and you can pay within a virtual credit card, ACH, electronic check, paper check. And then once that's completed, you can go ahead and push that over into your ERP. And then on my next slide, I'll cover a little bit more about that use pay functionality and also during our demo. Next slide, please. So I did mention the use pay functionality. Essentially what the use pay does, it empowers your organization with the simplest and most flexible automated digital invoice payment workflow. If you're tired of cutting checks and you want an easier way to pay within our system, you can do so. You can go ahead and set control levels within those payments. You can pay individual invoices, and you can also do batch payments within our system. Once again, credit card, uh, sorry, virtual credit card, virtual card, ACH, electronic check, paper checks. It'll be an, a one click and you can go ahead and distribute those. And then you'll receive your confirmation payment. And then all that information will be updated on real time into your ERP without you having to worry. So I'm going to uh, just talk a little bit about the, the key AR trends, and there's four of them that we found from our customers, from talking to our customers. And the first is the rapid adoption of digital payments. And I have another slide on that. That's kind of a wow slide, in my opinion. Um, also, real-time credit risk monitoring is key. Uh, personalized customer experience. So it's no longer... I mean, things have changed now, right? It's, it's, it's all about helping the customer be more efficient. So it's not just about, you know, it, it's just the way things are going. So that's important. And then lastly, and this kind of digs deeper into the adoption of digital payments, but automating accounts receivable to the core, really handling all the details. And so that's what we're going to go over. Next slide, please. And uh, so I'm an accountant. I used to sit in on these. I used to buy software. And when I would sit in on these, I always looked for what I called the money slide, which is how can I justify this to my boss so we can get it? And this is the first money slide. You know, it's kind of an eye opener. The cost of processing a check, you know, recording the payment is $4 to $20. And the cost of processing an HCH payment on an electronic check is 29 cents. That's a big difference. And it's kind of interesting. Again, two sides of the same coin. Luis had a sim similar diagram, right, that, that broke up the cost savings by automating this. But, but this is one of the, the key points that, that help you, you know, calculate an ROI on, on this software. And if we'll go to the next slide. And as we talk about automating collections, we'll talk about customer segmentation. And that's basically 
organizing your customers so you you understand the strategically important customers, the customers that may be having payment performance problems, customers with uh, degrading credit history, all of that is important. And then what else do we do? Well, we prioritize work lists so you your employees can be more effective, your accounts receivable team can be more effective. What need, it's no longer a judgment call, but it's what needs the most attention. And then automating the dunning and the correspondence, again, automating what's the drudgery of it, right? That's low risk. And then in, in line with, uh, you know, providing personalized customer experience, a self-service customer portal, so they can pay whatever way they choose to pay and the portal adopts that. So next slide, please. If you look at how we put this together or where we sit, right? We sit between the bank and your ERP application. And we interpret the, um, you know, the incoming checks and we um, match them up and we pay them. We provide automatic remittance aggregation. So, you know, one check pays five invoices, break it down and apply it to those five in invoices. Customer identification, deduction coding. Somebody codes an invoice or a check and they code it to an invoice for payment and it's less than the amount of the invoice. And then, you know, overall, this reduces um, email communication. And, and that's all, you know, that's, that's what we do. But the real trickery or the real challenge comes in on the left hand side. And that is kind of where we excel. And that's the payment process and handling all the different payment modes. You know, ACH, credit cards, checks. Sometimes some portals provide emails or they provide PDFs that have to be interpreted or they provide electronic data interchange or they provide web. And we, we can parse all that information from all those sources to really process your payments. Next slide. And so the, the, the last piece that, that we really dig into is, you know, better ways to manage credit risk. And especially with the economy the way it is and with COVID the way it is, um, you know, when you have small teams, it's not possible to review a lot of customers annually and, and, and their credit situation. And that's fine when the economy is stable, but when it's not stable, um, it's a challenge. And so we provide real-time credit monitoring, analysis of payment behavior. If they start coming in slow, we monitor bankruptcy news, credit scores, and make auto suggestions. So the AI engine makes auto suggestions on credit terms and, uh, you know, versus the, the manual periodic review of credit terms. So that's where we really fit in to the, the accounts receivable. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Luis to talk about security. Thank you, Rick. As I mentioned, COVID brought a lot of changes into a lot of the organizations, making sure that we have secure information is important, whether it's uh, an ironclad-based uh, automation, elimination of manual data entry, all that is gonna be really important. We also gotta make sure uh, that we set up multiple automated duplicate detections, which are set within our system. Uh, first one's gonna be based on the file name. As soon as we receive that, the, the system will notify the user uh, that a duplicate has been uploaded. Then after that, it uh, defaults to the invoice number. So we do have that built in there. Also, uh, making sure that we have an extensive audit history um, as you go through auditing, or you just wanna make sure that everything is set. Uh, we do have an extensive auditing uh, feature within our system, and I'll show you that during the demo. And then the last one, continuing on with that digital payments, is we do offer uh, secure digital payments versus traditional checks. So if you want to take advantage of that, have a more secure option, then secure digital payments will be that through the uh, use pay functionality. It's really important that we don't um, have hold anyone's bank information, so that makes it more secure for you. Next slide, please. Sure. And I just want to launch a quick poll before we move sure. forward and take a little break. <laughs> All right. So let me launch that now. All right. 
So if everyone could take this poll of the topics we're covering today, which is the most important to your organization currently? Looks like workflow automation is taking the lead. So yes, workflow automation is definitely taking the lead on that one. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Okay. Back to you. Perfect. Thank you. So uh, this is one of our success stories that we have, uh, one of our case study. Uh, we have LW Cold App Appliances. Um, they are an appliance distributor that has specialized in installing appliances throughout the UK. Uh, since 1944, they have been partnering with leading appliances. Uh, they were doing great, uh, successful, but then something happened, COVID hit. Uh, so just like many of us, their business was affected. Uh, the move away from physical workplaces highlighted the impracticality of continuing uh, with manual accounts payable. So there was a huge demand for a tool that would allow them to work from home um, and automate that process. Uh, so according to Mike Newton, which is a finance director uh, here on his uh, quote, uh, they quickly realized that they needed we needed an automated standardized approach to adapt to their current context and to urgently replace our manual paper-based invoice payments. Um, their system, as according to him, was archaic. Uh, we were sending vendor invoices by post leading to lost invoices and delayed payments. All those items that we covered that are pain points, uh, they were going through that. So what happened is uh, time was as of the essence for them. So when deciding for the solution with use, um, with, the, with their objective goals and, and plans, uh, we helped them uh, set up that process so they can go ahead and eliminate those, man, uh, those pain points uh, in just six months, just to kind of give you an idea. After the implementation of use, um, LW Cold had already seen the following benefits, which were improved efficiency, improved quality, integrity to the data, optimization of approval processes. So uh, just like the question said, workflow automation, that is something that we help them with. Uh, and obviously that perfect and seamless integration to their ERP, uh, which allow, them, uh, allow their accounting department to streamline the AP process quickly and smoothly. But that is something that, that we help with. Um, and um, if um, you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask those. Uh, next slide. So differentiators for us, why use? I know there's a lot of solutions out there uh, that handle AP solution, why us? Uh, there's gonna be a lot of uh, differentiators that we see here. First one's gonna be savings, which we covered uh, throughout the presentation is we can help you reduce costs by 80%. Uh, speed. We want to make sure that we cut the cycle time hours through our workflow approval. That's going to be one way that we can do that. We can handle that for you. You'll let us know how you want that set up, and we can go ahead and have that set up for you. Simplicity, we do have a powerful tool, but at the same time, it'll mask that complexity and allow the users to have something simple that they can use. Like I tell everyone, if I can use it, anyone can use it. I'm not the most technical person out there, but uh, we provide you training, and it's going to be a simple tool for you. You can access via your mobile device. So that's gonna be great. Visibility is gonna be great, whether it's from reporting, you wanna make sure that who is approving what is being reviewed, you can track that within our system. Obviously the all-in-one uh, from the creation of the purchase order all the way to the payment, we can help you with that. Security, which is also important. And then obviously we do offer our zero risk. Uh, you can try us for free and you can stop at any time. Next slide. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and enough talking on those slides. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the presentation. I know a lot of you are looking for that. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to post those in there. I'm gonna share my screen now, and then we're gonna go ahead and begin with that. And we should be good to go now. So today, what I wanna show you is why we are the smartest, most powerful and easiest to use purchase to pay automation solution on the market. I'm gonna run through several scenarios for you, run some invoices, but before I do that, I have my login page here. Just a basic login, we do use HTTPS. We are hosted by Microsoft Azure, which is again, one of the most secure servers in the world. So you can feel safe that all your information will be safe. Also on the right side, you're gonna have a window or a tab that shows you any important information, whether it's uh, product features, any important dates, any other updates you can do so. 
Also, since we use HTTPS, you can um, use us via any device, whether it's a mobile, uh, a mobile device, tablet, our system will accommodate to that. But let's go ahead and log in and continue on. This may look a little bit different for you. If you have multi-entities, we can go ahead and handle that. Um, you might have one application for each of your locations. You let us know how you want that set up. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and select mine and then we're gonna push forward into the interface. Once we're logged in, um, you're gonna see the use user interface, which is the most modern intuitive market, uh, intuitive interface in the market. And it's extremely customizable. You'll see some files loaded already here, uh, just to kind of uh, ex ex expedite our, our time here. But there's gonna be several important components that you'll see here, workspaces at the top, you have your capture, my test, my exports and statistics. Uh, those are gonna di differ depending on what permissions um, you, a user has. Also, you have access to the most powerful search engine in the market, which combines Google-like searches with multi-criteria searches. We store documents for over seven years. I'll cover that in a bit as well. Each profile has access to customization. We are big on training. Your users will be trained, but let's say you forget how to do something. You'll have some tools there that'll help you. Use your university. If you want to attend any webinars, any online sessions, trainings, you can go ahead and do so in there. And then obviously we do have our offer right now that if you recommend someone, one of your friends and they sign up, you will you are eligible for one month free of our service. So make sure you take advantage of that. But down here, continuing on with support, you will have access to a support manager. If you have any questions, any help, anything, you can go ahead and contact them below here, create a ticket, and then they can go ahead and respond and help you there. But let's move on here. If I open up over here, my filter, this is going to be important if you want to filter by organization unit, document type, vendor, dates, you can go ahead and do so. Just make sure that, uh, keep in mind that any changes that you apply here will be applied to all of your workspaces. But we'll close that out now. You have your to-do box. Essentially, this is your queue. If you have any invoices waiting for work, um, you'll see them listed there. At the bottom, you have in progress, which is essentially anything that you have worked on, and it's now going to sit on someone else's queue. If uh, you want to check and see what tasks they're waiting on, as you can see, some of them are currently waiting for approval. Some of them are waiting for payment. Other components here, as I mentioned earlier, purchase orders, whether you want to continue doing them through your ERP or you want to create them through our system, you'll have the ability to do so within our system. Also, you have your late complete block. Late is anything that has been marked as late for the system settings. Complete is anything that has 100% extraction on the header fields and the account lines. And then block is anything that you put on hold or pause for any uh, reason. It might be something that's on dispute. Uh, it might be missing some information. You can go ahead and block that out. But enough of that. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the capturing. I do have some invoices that are loaded, but uh, I mentioned earlier about our multi-engine uh, capture. Uh, how do we capture documents? Email capturing, you can go ahead and handle that in here. You can drag and drop your invoices. You can do that in there. Email capturing is quite easy. Like I said, you put in your accounts payable email address. We'll create an auto forward rule that push that into our server. At that point, our AI will go in there, extract the information. It takes about 20 seconds per invoice to do so. After that, based on the workflow that you design, and I'll show you that in a bit, that'll route it to the correct route. Uh, out of the box, we extract that 82 to 83% accuracy. Competitors are doing it at 60 to 70. Why is there a discrepancy? The reason for that is we don't rely on template-based extraction. It is 100% artificial intelligence. Uh, which means that it's less maintenance for you. Everything's on real time. Um, if somebody tells you that um, it's on real time, make sure that you ask about the time, how long it takes, anything that they might say a day or hours, uh, make sure you verify and see if that's actually real time. But continuing on here, other components, you can also take a picture from your cell phone, upload it directly to the URL, email it into your inbox, or we can go ahead and set up an EDI portal, or you can go ahead and drop in down um, the files through an SFTP server. If you have a box folder, we can also tap into that. But enough of that, we're gonna go ahead and move on into the workflow. I have some files here loaded, ready to go, but how or what route are they gonna be taking and how do we determine that? And that's gonna go to, to our admin settings over here. This is only applicable to your administrators. So you can go ahead and rearrange your organization units. You can add more, you can add your users, unlimited users, and then the workflows, which is the thing that's right now it's important. So those invoices that we uploaded, what routes are they taking? First, I've, I've set up this schematic for them. All of this is customizable. You can design this however you want to. What will happen is we will set this up for you. 
you can later on add more routes if you want to. You can um, have us help you with that. But what I've designed here so far is first, I'm going to go ahead and ask them for them to be reviewed. After that, I'm going to go ahead and have them approved. And then after that, I'll go ahead and send them over for payment. Uh, there's different routes that you can uh, set up. Um, different criteria can be applied to those. So here I have two routes. I can take advantage of my uh, touch list um, system, which is if I want to have my system auto review the system, uh, auto, sorry, auto review the invoices, I can do so. I've set up different criteria here. Um, uh, the conditions here that I've established, if it falls under any of these 10 vendors, anything lower than 550, it'll be auto reviewed. Anything that does not meet those conditions by default, any accountant will review those. Moving on into the approval, I have different routes here. If it has the word oxygen anywhere on the invoice, by default, uh, we've established that Francois is going to go ahead and, and, and approve that. We've, we can also set up uh, uh, conditions based on uh, amounts or totals. This one right here is a multi-approval. Anything over $4,000, Hillary will approve first, and then after that, Barack. We can continue doing with the no touch. Not only will the system auto-review, but it will also approve based on the criteria that we set. And then by default, anything that does not meet those criteria will be approved by Barack. Like I said, all of this is customized. You can set criteria conditions based on vendors, GL codes, whatever um, that is living on the invoice. We can go ahead and create that uh, condition for you. And then finally, we've established Angela as the person that's going to be paying. And that'll be one of the last parts that I'll cover during my demo here. But we'll close that out. We're going to go back into our invoices and kind of show you right now, I've, I've, I've took upon the helmet of a reviewer. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what the review process looks like. But ultimately, I want to show you what our smart data extraction engine looks like as well. Once we receive the invoice and we click on it, on the right side, you'll have the image. If I hover over the image, you'll see our extraction engine working. Everything that's highlighted means that it can be extracted. And as you can see, I can hover over all that information. On the left side, I have my header field information. This is the information that I'm expecting the system to extract from my invoice. This can be customized. Let's say for my Granger, I want to go ahead and extract my net terms. I can go ahead and do so. And then at the bottom, I have my account uh, information. If I click here, I can see all my accounts that are being pushed on real time for my ERP. I can change those as needed. But let's do the review process here quickly, show you how that looks. If I tab in, it'll show me where the information was extracted. Even though it's listed as document date, it did pick it up as invoice date, document number, due date, total amount at the bottom. And then I can go ahead and verify and balance this out. I do have one line item here. Everything looks good here. I can also leave a comment if I want to. I can free type at that point, or I can use my lasso tool, which is pretty interesting. And then we can go ahead and save that. But everything is good here. And we can go ahead and approve that. So we're going to go ahead and submit that and then move on into the approval. Based on the workflow, uh, Barack is the one that's going to go ahead and approve that. I'm just going to go ahead and show you the one payment here. Uh, sorry, one approval process. And then I'll show you the payment option. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and impersonate. Impersonate is a tool that's only applicable to your administrators. So I'm going to go ahead and impersonate Barack. And then I'm going to show you here how you can approve. You can approve uh, invoices one by one, or you can do batch approvals. If I approve this invoice right here, you'll see everything is similar. You still have the image on the right, header fields, account lines. And then at that point, I can go ahead and hit approve. And that one has been approved. And we can move on into the next one. And like I said, we can go ahead and do so batch approvals as well. Last thing I do want to show you here, let's go ahead and impersonate the payer. We're going to go ahead and hit Angela, which is the person that's going to be in charge of her paying. And once again, our use pay functionality is a is an add-on that empowers your organization with the simplest, most flexible automated digital payment workflow. So if you want to allow for payments within your system, you can do so. I'm going to click on the invoice. Everything's going to look the same. If I look at my payment lines at the bottom, you'll see that there's a difference here. It'll show me the amount that I can pay. Due date, it'll show me the option. It'll show the link, the bank account. I can leave a comment. Once I click pay, it'll trigger a payment. At that option, at that point, the vendor can select whether they want to do an ACH. They want to do a, a virtual credit card, uh, which the virtual credit card must be pre-funded through a, a custodial account, electron, uh, electronic checks, and mail-in checks. But everything can be handling here through our system. I can also do batch payments within our system. Uh, last thing I do want to show you here before I finish reporting, anything that you want to go ahead and create from your reports, you can do so. I can do Google-like searches. If I search for the word drum, it'll show me the invoice or invoice that has the word drum in it. 
it'll search through all the keywords. You can pull that. You can also save reports through here. If you want to go ahead and have reports of your all your vendors for last year that are over $5,000, you can go ahead and do so. But that pretty much finalizes my quick demo here. Um, just want to reiterate that um, uh, during this demonstration, I, uh, four important features that I want to make sure that you uh, take from here is we are a true cloud solution. We are the most powerful AP solution out there in the market. We are the easiest to use, as you saw, and then we are the smartest solution. Thank you. And I'll hand it out to Rick and Sean. Thank you. That was great. I think we have a couple of slides before we dive into the demo. So let me go back to that. Thanks, Louise. You're welcome, Rick. All right. Can everyone, can you see my slides? Yes. Okay. Perfect. And so I have two quick, what I'll call again, money slides on how do you pay for this? And then uh, just a framework slide on our solution. I'll turn it over to Sean. So um, this is a study by uh, Payments. It's an analyst firm that uh, focuses on how businesses pay, get paid and monetize their interactions. And so what they found is uh, with, with solutions such as ours, right? DSO improvement, day sales outstanding, 62%. Um, operational cost, which I think everybody kind of highlighted is one of the key, one of the key things for finance, 72% saving, and better customer experience, a 74.8% saving. So that was part of their study. Um, kind of the qualifier in all of that is it is with a PCI DSS compliant security framework. And so when you're talking to companies like ours, that's the question you want to ask to make sure they have that security level. Next slide. On a more high radius focused perspective, uh, Avante saved 90% of their analyst time and repurposed it for their top customers. So they basically automated and, you know, and, and I mean, 90% of analyst time is, is a significant number, right? And, and they were able to cut it by that with the automatic payment. Um, Armanino had automatic invoice matching and they were able to achieve a 75% savings on that. Next slide. So I'm gonna turn it over to Sean, but what I wanted to mention is this is the framework of our application, right? So we, we had those uh, six or seven slices of the pie that we originally talked about. And so we have to fill those. We have a credit cloud, an EIPP cloud, cash application cloud, deduction cloud, and collection cloud. So those are the, the pieces of our application. And with that, I'll turn it over to Sean so we can give you a demo. Perfect, All right. perfect. Yes, and we're just going to launch a quick poll before we get started, Sean, if you don't mind. Of course. What is your... <laughs> All right, everyone. What is your main prior priority while optimizing the Odyssey process? Please feel free to share your feedback with us. A lot of everybody's seeing all of the above, which is good. So yeah, we got a lot of those. So thank you everyone for taking that poll and I will hand it over to you, Sean. Let me stop sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. Perfect, maybe I could touch up on all the benefits. Sure, yes, and we'll get, to, I, thank you everyone for putting your questions in the chat. We will get to those at the end, just so you know. Keep, all right, keep, give me a thumbs adding. up when you see the screen. It looks good. Perfect, perfect. So I'm not going to try and cover the entire demonstration of the five AR modules along with analytics that we have as a part of high radius offerings. But what I want you to see is how clean the UI looks. It's very dashboards oriented. It's intuitive in nature. You know, the dashboards could talk, the reports could talk within themselves. You could click on one and the, all the other dashboards are going to change according to the 
um, segment where you're clicking on. And what I want another thing for you to see is that all of the solutions are under the same hood. So it's going to be a one login and all of the solutions would be in the same window and each solution would be integrated with the other solution, meaning they will talk amongst each other. What I mean by that is one specific use case could be a customer has a very high utilization of their credit limit, gets on a very high priority for the collector to work upon. Name a use case um, that you can think about between two solutions in ER and all of that would be applicable within the solution. Okay. Um, High radius is the true end-to-end -end account receivables provider, meaning it would start right from a customer being onboarded through credit to the customer, you know, being presented the invoice, making the payments, the cash being applied, um, the customer high radius solution working on the deductions uh, that the customers might be taking and collecting on the past due customers who would just not pay up no matter how many times they are being followed up on. So I'll start off with the credit uh, module. So what you see is the online credit application form. So a typical credit analyst would uh, create a credit application form, send it to all of the customers that they have, that they want to get onboarded, and the end customers are going to fill this up. And um, it's going to be on the credit analyst to review this manually and then uh, go ahead and put a credit score and a credit limit for that particular customer. But here we have the online credit application form. Um, the customer can fill all of the details. They can put in the bank and trade information. And once they go ahead and click on review and submit, this information is going to flow up in the credit module that we have inside the solution. So this is a particular customer who has filled up the credit application form. And you can see it's not just in the work list of the credit analyst, but it's it also has a page of its own and a credit limit and a credit score has already been assigned to this particular customer who has filled up the online credit application form. So what does it eliminate? It eliminates the need to create a credit application form. It eliminates the need to go through the credit application form manually to aggregate data from the expensive credit agencies and accum accumulate all of the data to manually score and manually put a credit limit. All of this, the solution is doing and the credit analyst can simply work on the solution and see, you know, approve the credit limit that the solution is providing and move ahead with it. This is one aspect of the credit solution. You know, there are approvals. So if this is a news case that any customer who's getting a credit limit above 50,000 needs to be approved by the CFO, then there could be automated approval workflows that can happen within the system. The CFO can simply get an email. They can click on either they approve or they reject it. And the same information is going to flow back inside the high radius solution. All of the information that high radius is going to use to credit score this customer is going to be available in the same window for the credit analyst to review. The application info is going to have the online credit application form. The credit rating is going to have the data the credit data that's been aggregated from the agencies or the real-time credit monitoring that we have as a part of the solution to come up with this particular score and limit. Now that the customer has been onboarded, the customer is going to start putting in orders. And for those orders, the invoices needs to be presented. Here we get into the next module, which is EIPP, stands for Electronic Invoice Presentment and Payment. So there are two components to the solution. The first one is presentment. So High Radius is going to pick up the invoices from the ERP system and present it uh, via email, or even if it needs to be presented to customer AP portals, High Radius could do that. This is one aspect. And on the supplier side, on your side, you would have complete control over your customers. You would be able to see what are the open invoices for any particular customer. Go ahead and view those invoices, email out those invoices to other contacts if one contact is not paying. If you'd want to pay on behalf of any particular customer, maybe the phone call you and tell you that these are the invoices for which I want to make a payment. Pay on behalf of their customers, raise disputes, and also manage the customers in the sense of uh, blocking credit card credit card payments for high dollar amount customers or you know choosing the correspondence preference maybe change the correspondence preference from email to customer ap portals where the invoices needs to be delivered then disable or enable auto pay for some of the customers so all of this control the supplier as in you would have over your customers saying this i'll just flip over to the buyer portal um could you amy could you confirm if the buyer portal is up with Apple written on the corner here. I don't see it. All right. 
Let me share it again. I'm sure I shared the window and not the screen. <laughs> <laughs> you should there be able to say it now. Yes. Perfect, perfect. So this is the buyer portal. So when I was talking about EIPP, along with getting the invoices presented to them via emails or to their customer AP portals, this is the high radius portal uh, that the customers are going to see. This portal is going to be completely branded based on your company guidelines, logos, colors, all of it would be branded based on you. And here, the customers would see all of the open bills for which they have to make the payments. The customer can go ahead and choose any of the bill, pay the bills through the modes that they want by ACH, credit card, debit card. There are multiple other options as well, Trustly, SIPA. And once they have made the payments, the same information is going to flow back into the ERP system to close off the invoices for which they are going to be making the payments from this buyer portal. Now, along with seeing the open bills, they would also have access to see the closed bills, the payment history, download the payment receipts for which they have made the payments and also raise disputes. So for any situation, if the customer would want to raise a dispute because of shortage, compliance, whatever be the cause, they can go ahead and raise the dispute right from the buyer portal itself. And this is also gonna eliminate the need to have a lot of to and fro uh, by emails or by mails, whatever, because from the supplier portal, from the previous portal that I was showing, a notification could be sent out, which is going to come as a pop-up up here in the bell icon. And it could be anything. It could be your creditization is this. It could be, you know, we are launching this another payment mode that you can utilize. It could be any note that could be sent directly to the buyer portal for them to see. One more thing I want to tell is high radius is going to track how many customers are actually adopting to the buyer portal how many customers are actually moving on from check payments to electronic mode of payments and this is something high radius will track and provide best practices provide campaigns you know like a mass email launch of the portal and help in getting customers onboarded to electronic modes and move away from the traditional check payments Perfect. Yep, William, you got me. All right. I will share um, the screen further. So now that the customer has been onboarded and we have presented the invoices and the, we have provided payment options for the customer, next will come collections. So for customers who would not pay up, we have an entire collections module which is going to come with a prioritized work list. So what does this prioritized work list eliminate? It eliminates the need for a collector to go ahead and identify which are the high risk customers, what are the tasks that are needed to be performed for the high risk customers. So it comes with a suggested actions to be performed. And here the collector can simply click on any particular action and perform the action for those customers to whom it's intended. As I scroll down, you will see a prioritized work list, which is going to have a list of all the customers arranged on the basis of priority. And this is what's going to talk with all the other solutions. So as I mentioned, this priority can go up based on if a payment commitment is not honored. This priority can go down if a customer keeps making uh, payments within their payment terms. So it's dynamic. And here the collector can choose to act just by clicking on this. Clicking on first pass due notice, the work list modifies to show only those customers that would need a first pass due notice to be served to them. They can simply click on here, click on the email window, click on the email window over here and send out the first pass due notice to all of these customers to whom it's intended. Now, this is, the, this is somewhat of an automation uh, where all of the invoices, um, all of the dunning could be sent out at a single go but it could also be completely automated. Just go over to the administration section and here you can see action name, action type, and some has auto while some have manual. So what it means is based on strategies and rules that are going to work on the backend, actions could be automated from the collection solution. So you could say it like all of the customers who are falling uh, within, um, you know, within, 100 days of not paying, send them an automated correspondence from the solution itself without me having to log in to the solution at all. So based on this rules and strategies, all of the correspondences and actions can be automated from the solution. So this is about collections. Every customer is gonna have their own screen. 
where you know it could be drilled down and there are multiple options like making a phone call logging in payment commitments um setting notes setting up tasks applying the payments and also we have a voip function of calling from the window itself where the analyst can go ahead and call the customer right from the solution and while making the call they can go ahead and take notes and all the notes are going to be saved in the notes section here there are much more functionalities within collections as you can see but this is a very high level overview so i just want to touch up on the very most important basic functions that are there and coming into cash application now once the payments have been made we have the cash application module so what the cash application module does is it automatically matches in the payments with the open invoices that are present in the ERP system so the cash application solution is going to integrate with the bank to get in the payment file integrate with the multiple remittance sources made be via emails via web portals uh, via edis get all of the remittance in the solution and also have the open ar from the erp system having all of this data the solution is going to do a three way match to close off the invoices for which the payments have already been made now here you see that 31 payments have already been applied so what it essentially means is your cash app analyst logs into the system they see 80 85% payments have already been applied um by the start of their day and throughout the remaining day they have to work only on the 15 to 20% exceptions for which uh, the solution provides ai remittance prediction and auto invoice matching functionalities after cash application we have the deductions module this is very applicable to some specific industries like cpg manufacturing wholesale distribution high tech so here um, the solution is going to automatically create line items for the deductions that the customers are going to take aggregate the backup documents that are needed to be researched on the deductions and the ai engine of the solution is going to predict whether the deduction that has been taken in by the customer is valid or invalid there is a resolution engine as well through which resolutions can be performed from the solution and um, credit memos could be taken um, could be uh, the deduction could be offset um, any deduction could be right written off a denial correspondence can be sent from the solutions all of these features are available within the solution itself and finally before i end it hand it over to amy i want to focus on the analytics so every solution that i showed has inbuilt analytics within the solution so what it means is you would not have to any longer track the kpis of the collectors manually you know there's no need to write dso reports or forecasting reports there is average days to pay you know no need to go through aging to find out who are the top delinquent customers all of these reports are available out of the box with the solution and this is across the board for different ar modules for cash application you'll see what are the hit rates that the solution is able to provide which are the customers who are still making check payments what is the hit rate on check payments for credit you can see who are the customers with the top utilization of their credit limit so all of these reports are available out of the box with the solution okay um just a time check so this is what i had to you know cover on a very high level demonstration of the high radius cloud solution so back to you amy Awesome. Thank you, Sean. Let me share my screen again and we'll get to the questions. And I'll just leave up the contact slide so everybody can reach out to you all. Okay, so let me get to the questions. Those were some powerful tools, I have to say. I would. Uh, think everybody would want to automate their AP and AR after seeing those. <laughs> okay, first question. Does the tool support separate approvers based on GL codes in the same invoice? I'm assuming that's for you, Louise. Yes, uh, great question, William. Um, and yes, we can handle that uh, by sending for approval uh, uh, to multiple approvers in parallel. Um, so that workflow that I showed on, on the screen, um, that's where we can go ahead and handle but yes the short answer is, is yes and then um i would recommend uh, um, I'll, i we can have somebody reach out for my team and they can kind of elaborate a little bit more about that okay 
Does the tool also support multiple entities to ensure when you export the file, it knows which entity gets what invoice and follow the coding of that entity so it goes to the right GL code? Yes. Uh, also, we do support multi-entity management within our system. Um, you can have those scenarios where uh, there's an invoice that needs to be distributed uh, across different multi multiple entities. We can handle that. But yes, the answer is also yes. If an invoice has multiple line items that require separate approvers for each line item, how does the tool handle the workflow? Yeah, similar to the other question is uh, we can go ahead and handle that um, multi multiple approvers in parallel. Um, we can go ahead and set up the conditions however we want to, whether it's a GL code, uh, whatever condition you want to go ahead and establish, we can go ahead and do so. Okay. And then do I need to change anything in my ERP system if I wanted to use high radius order to cash product? Nope, uh, nothing. Uh, we are going to work on the data in your ERP system. We definitely we, uh, usually take the AR information, open AR customer master data contact details, and that would be it. So no change needs to be done in the ERP system. Okay. Another one, can you create accrual reports for invoices that are not approved? Yes, uh, great question. It'll be done through our reports uh, section uh, on our search engine. You can go ahead and create reports for those invoices that have not been approved, that have been approved, that are currently waiting for, to be reviewed. Um, you can generate any report that you like. And then one question for each of you before we wrap up is how long does it typically take to implement these types of solutions? Yeah, for high radius, it would depend on the complexities, but anywhere between um, six to 17 weeks. Yes, and for us, it, it depends on the ERP, the scope of the project, but I would say that it's anywhere from two to three months. Um, I would recommend talking to one of our AEs and, and we can go ahead and, and align that for you and, and let you know what's the expected timeline. Okay, well, that was it for questions. Thank you everyone for joining us today for the two sides of the same coin. And you can feel free to reach out to use or high radius and here's their contact information. Again, we will be sending out the recording as well and following up with you. And you can certainly reach out with any other questions that you may have. So again, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Rick, Sean, and Louise for being here and presenting. And I appreciate you all being here. So thanks again. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.